Well, welcome to today's webinar entitled Leveraging Big Data for Manufacturing. Today's webcast will run for approximately 30 minutes, followed by a question and answer session. Uh, please enter your questions using the chat feature during the webcast. Uh, I have the um, uh, pleasure of introducing Don Buzik, General Manager for Manufacturing Operations Management Software, and later on Ken Rawlings, the Product Manager for Prophecy Plant Applications. My name is Simon Lawson. I'm the Marketing Manager for Manufacturing Operations Management Software here at Intelligent Platform. In today's um, webinar, we will go through investing in the future of industrial big data, big data for the industrial sector, and then we'll move into big data for the manufacturing sector. Uh, we'll then cover how we enable your business using our products and have a conclusion followed by Q&A at the end. So without further ado, first of all, industrial businesses have entered the age of big data, whereby the volume and variety and complexity of data they manage is exploding at record rates. According to McKinsey and Company, manufacturing stores more data than any other sector, close to two exabytes of new data stored in 2010. Big data is the proliferation of data from various systems, devices, and applications whose size make it a challenge to capture, manage, and process within a tolerable period of time using traditional software solutions. Big data sizes can range from a few dozen terabytes to many petabytes of data in a single data set. Massive amounts of operational data are coming online with the ever-increasing set of advance of devices and equipment. Forward-thinking businesses are leveraging this data for operational excellence and predictive analysis to create a competitive advantage and accelerate growth. In this webinar, we discover what big data means for manufacturing sector and the significant implications it will have in the near future how historians provide commercially off the shelf solutions to address big data challenges as companies accumulate larger and larger data sets, and how critical insights enabled by big data in conjunction with MES can significantly improve operational performance. Investing in the future of big data. GE has big data. Across the company, GE handles over five terabytes of data per day. We're investing heavily in understanding how to leverage this data through innovation at our research and development site. Big data is important to GE and is a key area of research carried out in our global research centers. In our centers, we have uh, over 7,000 technologists, two Nobel Prize winners, and we invest $600 million a year in our research and development. And our founding principle is to improve business through technology. Our software development teams are able to access this huge research and development resource. And we asked the GRC to do a performance and benchmark analysis on Prophecy Historian. And the results were really encouraging. Using our standard products, we had the fastest read from 17 and a half times to 75,000 times faster than a traditional database. We were also one of the only optimized read and write um, historians. And we also had the smallest data footprint. And our teams work with the GE scientists to make historian even better. So why is having this small data footprint important? Because it has a direct impact on the size and cost of your network infrastructure. And with more users connecting mobile devices, the on-cost of mobile network charges needs to be managed, and users want super responsive applications. A low data footprint means faster response rates and more usable applications. So what does big data mean for the industrial sector? Well, the definition is it's time series data connected to controlled devices with high velocity. The example data sources are shown here. So where do we use this within GE, within our own businesses? Well, as an example, GE Energy's Monitoring and Diagnostic Center in Atlantic, Georgia, collects data from thousands of gas turbines in more than 50 different countries around the world, collecting data for our customers in the order of 10 gigabytes per day. 
having to organize and interpret a constant flow of data on vibration and temperature signals delivered by sensors across its fleet. Big data is part of the sensor's everyday operation. Prior to implementing Prophecy Historian, the center could only store about three months of data online, and its legacy applications, which were based on multiple relational databases, limited the ability to optimize its data. Fulfilling data requests would take days or weeks because it would have to pull from the archives, manually load offline data, and then rerun the queries against it, a time-consuming and often challenging task. Now, with Prophecy Historian, it can store 10 years of data online, enabling it to efficiently run queries against much larger data sets without having to manually move data in and out of systems for real-time analysis. It can quickly get answers to critical issues that impact operational performance, such as degradation of equipment since its installation. As a result of faster identification of issues, it can make timelier decisions and drive quicker corrective action. The results were impressive. Overall, through the use of big data across its fleet, it estimates a cost saving and a cost avoidance of $75 million per year and a two times increase in its ability to deliver values to customers since Prophecy was installed. This research also benefits big data for the manufacturing center. Manufacturing companies record tremendous amounts of processed data, and this growing volume is becoming ubiquitous. For example, a CPG company that produces a personal care product generates 5,000 data samples every 33 milliseconds, resulting in 152,000 samples per second, 3 million samples per minute, 545 million samples per hour, 4 billion samples per day, and 4 trillion samples a year. Clearly, the volume of data from which to extract value is beyond the capability of traditional data management systems. What's more, the challenge of managing big data for industry goes beyond the sheer volume of information. There's a diversity and complexity of data which comes in various formats and from disparate sources. There are typically islands of process information that must be aggregated, stored, and analyzed to derive context and meaningful value. To leverage big data, industrial businesses need the ability to support different types of information, the infrastructure to store massive data sets, and the flexibility to re-leverage the information once it's been collected and stored, enabling historical analysis of critical trends and association of different data in the context of the business systems using MES and the use of real-time predictive analysis to drive operational excellence. The scale of the big data in the manufacturing sector is immense. In fact, it's so huge that here at GE Intelligent Platforms, we provide specialized software for the data centers used to warehouse all this data. Today, the creation and use of big data beyond large web companies like Yahoo, Google, and Facebook, businesses everywhere, including industrial enterprises, face mounting pressure to stay competitive with data-driven strategies, requiring increasingly more data, which results in the accumulation of larger and larger data sets. In addition, Evolving and ever more stringent regulatory requirements necessitate the collection of more information as proof of audit and compliance issues. Boiling down all this data into simple, actionable information that can be used to drive day-to-day -day operations starts with the visibility provided by Historian. Our SCADA and MI HMI systems acquire huge amounts of data which can be made visible at this level through a user interface or a Historian. The next step is to put this physical data into the context of the manufacturing process. The temperature of this tank, a physical property, was 60 degrees on batch number 47. So its contents complies with the relevant safety parameters and can be used in the final product. This is the point where information is both visible and actionable, and this is MES and answers the key MES questions, how to produce, what to produce, when and what to produce, when and what was produced. The what was produced question is vital for regulatory compliance and reporting as a key strength of the GE Prophecy software portfolio. All in all, it gives a complete picture of what we did and how well we did it, and it answers the question, how well did we do it today? The next level is, how can we do it better tomorrow? The GE Prophecy software portfolio has a strong reporting and analytics to enable predictive production, and this is what we call the enabled enterprise. The view we take on big data is subtle and important. 
For our industrial users, analytics are very important. It's like taking a microscopic view of the data. For our manufacturing users, taking a larger view and looking for added value is critical to move from big data collection and analysis to associations and connections, melding real-time data with transactional data and short for automation with business systems. Of course, all businesses have a mixture of both, but in essence, these different viewpoints need to be considered, all in real time, something that purely transactional systems struggle to achieve at scale and speed. So how does this help your business? By combining a prophecy historian with the context provided by both advanced analytics and the business context we get from prophecy MES, we can make better manufacturing decisions, identify continuous improvement opportunities, reduce costs and get products to market faster. I'd like now to turn over the discussion to Don Buzek, who will outline how we do this with the latest release of plant applications. So Don, over to you. Simon, thank you very much. And thank you for spending the time uh, with us as we step through our our uh, thoughts on this topic. So as Simon said, um, data is increasingly critical across our global enterprises. And, and what you do and how you analyze and how you take advantage of that data uh, is also increasingly critical. What I want to talk about now with the next few charts is our version 6.1 plan applications release, uh, which is really taking MES and taking your ability to analyze and drive best practices uh, to the next level. I'll give you a second to read through this quote um, from ARC, one of the largest analyst firms who covers the manufacturing software space. But uh, a couple things I'll highlight. The first is that we have been in uh, specifically the MES space for over 16 years now. So this uh, 6X release that you see is uh, the culmination of uh, best practices that we've been baking into our software for over 16 years. Literally during that time, we have thousands of customers using the software, ranging from you know Fortune 10 type companies. Uh, Simon mentioned how we at, here at GE have deployed our software internally across multiple sites and plants, uh, down to you know smaller manufacturing companies that uh, uh, really are looking to drive best practices across their organizations. The focus of this release, as you can see from, from this quote, was really around um, giving our customers, our partners, our uh, end users of our software um, more return on investment and uh, increasing the amount of tools that you have to be able to tailor the software to your business. And I think here this is obviously key. You know, the world is changing. Um, if you rewind back 30 or 40 years, you know, manufacturing companies were concerned with the competitors that they dealt with that were based, you know, the town over, um, you know, or local competitors. Now competition is global, and you need to be able to scale to be able to um essentially compete on that global level. As such, you know, we obviously offer things like, you know, multiple ways to deploy the MES software, which I think is critical when you think about analyzing your data, ranging from on-site deployments at the plant uh, to centralized deployments where you're um, pushing your analytics out to um, your plant supervisors, your uh, operators, your engineers, etc., on a local level, but have done your deployment uh, on a centralized or, de or global level. Now, when we talk specifically about Plant Application 6.1, um, for us, you know, you can see the, the bullets here. For us, it's all about giving you the flexibility to tailor the software to meet your business. It's um, the culmination of all of your, uh, all of the data that Simon described and being able to take that, tailor it, understand the implications of your business, and then push out that information and the according best practices uh, to the people on the plant floor. And so uh, this release was focused really on, I think the last bullet is the one to focus on, the best economics, where we spent a lot of time thinking about return on investment. How, how do we make it easier for plant apps customers to... Um, drive quick return on investment uh, in the software. And so that best economics for us uh, was a major focus of this release. Now, 
as we step through those bullets uh, from the prior chart, first the familiar made better. This is a case where uh, we, I think, have some unique uh, position in the market. Um, when you talk about contains the best practices of our world's leading com- companies, we are able to do a couple things. The first is, you know, GE is world renowned for manufacturing excellence. So we work with uh, our internal manufacturing plants to take the best practices of those GE uh, plants and bake them into our software. But also, um, we work with our thousands of customers. We have multiple customer advisory sessions, voice of the customer sessions throughout the year, uh, where those customers are providing feedback and driving the next releases of the of our software, providing feedback on their best practices in terms of uh, manufacturing excellence and baking that into the software. So for us, this is a case where really our development cycles are extremely collaborative with our customers. Um, and we feel strongly that, again, on the MES side, this is software that's got 16-plus years of best practices baked in uh, from companies ranging from you know, single-site deployments to uh, 140 sites around the world. As you step through some of these other items, you know, it's critical when you think about all of the data that Simon described, that unified manufacturing database is a, is a critical component with the ability to parse through and make sense of all of that data and then drive analytics on top of it, drive and understand uh, uh, the best practices of your plants uh, based on that. That's that unified manufacturing database. The familiar user interface, you know, user experience matters at the end of the day. And so being able to have your operators spend less time in the software and more time um, at the line is critical. And so for us, we spend a lot of time with the user interface, understanding how people use the software, understanding how we minimize clicks and maximize value. And so that's a critical item. And then architect the future, uh, it's that ROI comment I made earlier around the fact that um, the world changes now faster than it ever has before. So you need the tools in your software to be able to uh, take advantage of that, architect for not just today, but for where your business will be tomorrow. And so uh, for us, a lot of that is in, our, in the configuration tooling that we provide, uh, allowing you to implement uh, your software today, but tailor it for uh, your business as it grows and evolves going forward. And so for us, that's the familiar made better. Um, you've got 16 years of best practices across thousands of customers baked into the software, and it's around the tooling to give you uh, quicker ROI and to be able to tailor for the future. Now, the, the second bullet uh, was around the professional's release, and, and this is um, for us, again, I think a, a critical item. What you're seeing now or trends that we're seeing as the MES space and manufacturing market evolves is that customers and companies more and more are looking to take best practices from one plant and transfer that over to a second plant and so on. And as companies look uh, across all of their manufacturing plants, they're looking at how do they take uh, the best practices from one and transfer it over, but also understand the challenges of of those individual plants and how uh, performance can be improved. And so um, MES at a global scale gets at being able to do that, understand what's going on across all of your plants around the world, um, or down to what's going on to the individual plant in one location. Faster deployment, new SOA connectivity, this gets to, these two bullets get to the point of uh, improving your ROI. At the end of the day, when you're buying software, whether it's MES software or any other software, you're putting your name on the line that this is the right decision. And so our goal here is to make it easier for you to deploy the software get quicker return on investment, fix your key pain points faster, and the SOA connectivity is because really that's the way the world is evolving, Uh, making it easier for you to remove the silos that you see in your systems uh, and pass data between your MES and your ERP and so on across all of your systems and infrastructure. More options to solve business challenges is what I was talking about earlier. This is um, a case where you've got... uh, growing global competition. And so your software, whether that's MES or anything else, needs to help you 
uh, in that increasingly competitive landscape. And so our goal here is to give you out-of-the-box templates, out-of-the-box best practices based on your industry, but then give you the tools to be able to tailor it so that as your business evolves, uh, you can uh, evolve your software accordingly with it without massive new reinvestment or new coding, etc. And so we spend a lot of time working with our customers to understand those business challenges and understand how you need to tailor um, your software, again, configure your software, um, based on the new data that's coming in, based on uh, the new challenges that you're seeing around the world. Now, when we talk about standards-based, this is a case where it is increasingly important, I think, uh, to look at the standards that uh, software is taking around the world. Historically, I think software has been somewhat siloed. Uh, you know, you, your general manager asks for a report, and you're pulling data from four different uh, software systems, you're comparing it and trying to merge different reports, the data doesn't line up, what you see from one system doesn't match up with what you see from another system. And so um, it's increasingly critical to allow, to provide standards such as SOA and S95 out of the box in the software and then allow you to configure based on how that may have been implemented at any given customer or may not if, if no standards are being followed. Uh, so for us, it's an open and flexible architecture allowing you to take the software and uh, modularize it, meaning fix individual pain points one at a time. You don't have to go with a big bang approach. Go with uh, the individual pain points that all that data Simon mentioned is telling you. Uh, follow the standards to allow you to integrate into uh, the rest of the software in your infrastructure. And then take advantage of really the, I think, what is a, a massive transition in our industry around the impact of social applications, hyper-connected workforce, and Internet of Things, changing demographics. You know, we're we're looking at a spot where mobility, being able to access your data off of any form factor, whether that's a handheld or a laptop or a big screen TV, whatever that may be, being able to access that right data at the right time, uh, that's changing a changing dynamic in the world. Have being able to um, instant message chat a peer of yours who's based on the other side of the planet and ask about the best practices that they've seen on any given topic or how they did, uh, how they handled a specific challenge that you're seeing, that's all stuff that we need to think about now in our software. And so when we talk about standards-based, um, it's allowing us to take advantage of those trends and allowing you as a manufacturing company to drive excellence across your organization. Rock solid is, I think, a critical component. When somebody is implementing software, uh, at the end of the day, you need to be focusing on, you know, your best practices and how you improve operations. And really, you don't want to be focusing on uh, the software itself. And so Rock Solid is a, is a, uh, a mission-critical CTQ, if you will. Uh, we've spent many, many years, as you can see here, with uh, thousands of customers um, working on uh, their best practices and evolving those and baking that into the software. We also work closely with our GE businesses. This, is, to me, is a uh, really unique, unique facet of working at GE that I can at any given time sit down with a plant manager of arguably one of the best uh, plants uh, in the world in terms of its lean operations, etc., understand their best practices and turn around and productize that in the software. Um, the last or the second to last bullet that you see here, I think again goes into that rock solid. So we take with our releases of our MES software and our manufacturing software, we take it and deploy it internally within our GE plants, sometimes for a number of years uh, before uh, we release it to commercial customers. So in the case of Plan App Six One, which we released uh, earlier this summer, it actually had been shipping and been um, being deployed internally within GE plants uh, since uh, the prior fall. That's about seven or eight months worth of um, end users hammering the software before we even make it available to our um, 
to our larger customer base. Well, what that does is that in turn means that the software is incredibly hardened by the time it even does its first release. I think that is a great, great strength of, uh, of the software. And then the where you want it, when you want it, is simply because I think we are arguably one of the most flexible companies in the industry in terms of our um, pricing and packaging and in terms of being able to say, listen, take the software, you want this module and deploy it on this spot, that's certainly fine. Uh, you want some unique uh, pricing packages, we try to price based on our smaller customers ranging up to our Fortune 100 type customers, and I think that you need that flexibility and also, you need the flexibility in terms of where to access the data, whether that's a handheld or uh, an iPad, et cetera. And so lots of flexibility in terms of where you want it and when you want it. And the best economics, again, in a world where return on investment has gone from you know a three-year return on investment to arguably a 10- to 12-month return on investment cycle, this is the best economics is, I think, a critical bullet. The focus nowadays is on uh, the fact that when you make an investment in software or anything else, you must have return on that investment. And so the way you do that is by providing uh, COTS or complete off-the-shelf software that is has unique industry-specific functionality because I believe firmly that the requirements – of a manufacturing company in the beverage industry is differently, different than the requirements of a manufacturing company in the automotive industry. Your requirements and needs are different. And so we offer out-of-the-box functionality that's unique by industry. And what that does is provides you with increased deployment. You're able to get live faster uh, as a result. And then... Um, the start small, small and scale again, I think, is critical. We spend a lot of time up front uh, in our implementations, just focused on what are your key pain points. What that does is allows you to nail your pain points uh, and major pain points that drive your business faster, fix those and resolve, and then move on to the next module. Uh, again, it's all focused on your return on investment and driving that return on investment across your organization. So I want to thank you for the time here. I've provided some contact information. Uh, Ken Rawlings is the product manager for Plan Applications uh, and certainly is available at any time, uh, day or night, uh, for any questions or comments that you may have. And with that, I'll turn it back over to Simon Lawson, um, who can walk through the remainder of our session today. Thank you very much for your time. Well, thanks very much, Don. So in conclusion... I think business and IT leaders need to ask themselves whether their manufacturing enterprise is maximizing the full potential of their process data and using that insight to drive real-time improvement. And as data volumes continue to expand, information strategies will only become more pervasive as a sort of a best in the best. Making the use of big data in the manufacturing space is ever more imperative. So a closer look at advanced historians seamlessly combined with MES demonstrates how such uh, technologies can help enterprises lead their time series process data by providing the ability to efficiently run real-time analytics with massive data sets. These solutions have the potential to revolutionize the way enterprises do businesses by providing critical insights for timely operations decisions while also enabling continuous improvement across the enterprise. So going forward, as information increasingly empowers enterprises to understand their businesses better and to foresee what is possible, those that capitalize on the value of big data will gain insights to improve performance beyond their competitors. They will have be positioned to better innovate, compete, and drive value, all of which will significantly accelerate business growth and continuously drive optimized performance for long-term success. So GE is investing heavily in this area, we have a solution today, and we're investing for tomorrow. So thanks for listening. You can hear a recording of this WebEx by visiting our virtual briefing center at the industrial software page of GE Intelligent Platform. We'll now take questions and answers, so please enter your questions using the chat feature. Well, the lines are open now. Uh, this is Simon Lawson. 
Um, please feel free to uh, enter your, any questions that you have into the uh, chat window. And we have some questions coming in now. Um, the first question is, uh, what is the difference between big data and industrial data? And uh, uh, Don, I think I'll, I'll take that one to start. Um, it's a great question. Um, big data in general is uh, massively exponentially growing data that represents uh, problems on collection storage and delivery and analytics. And the focus and growth in this area has been uh, generally outside the industrial sector. So um, companies like Google, Amazon, Facebook, Twitter have been focused on ways to capture massively growing sets of unstructured data. Um, and more importantly, how they can extract answers to questions of that data. So questions they would ask of these, um, like Facebook postings, Twitter's blogs postings, would be like, you know, what are the teens in Europe drinking and why? So traditionally, methods of storing data in this world, like a relational database, just don't work for this massively growing set of unstructured data. So other technologies like Hadoop, which is an open source uh, and designed to solve this, this problem. Um, now, what has not been addressed is the massive amount of data that is, is generated um, in the industrial world. Um, industrial data has very different data sources and is characterized um, by the gener uh, data generated by Facebook and Twitter. So our sources of data are largely from automated processes, and the data itself is in the form of time series data streams. So our GRC recognized the need to manage large amounts of industrial data and did a fairly exhaustive set of big data technologies along with Prophecy Historian. Um, what they found out is all the investment by these large uh, software companies have missed the needs of the industrial sector, and Historian was the only technology designed to capture and store this type of data. So uh, I hope that answers the question around what the difference is between big data and industrial big data. So the next question is, uh, do you offer an online demo of re your reporting uh, tools and plant applications? Uh, Don, would you like to take that one? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Simon. So with regards to online demos of our functionality and uh, reporting tools, absolutely. Uh, that is something that you would need to schedule through our uh, our demo team, but absolutely we offer online uh, demos and uh, Q&A certainly available. So would be happy to do it. Simply uh, you saw the, the contact information for Ken Rawlings on that, on that email. Simply reach out to, uh, to Ken or if you're already a, a, a GE Prophecy customer, simply reach out to, uh, to your existing rep or drop me or Simon a note and we can easily schedule something at, uh, at, a, at your convenience. Okay, so the uh, next question is, this looks to answer how we capture and store big data at the plant level, but how do um, intelligent platforms provide for aggregation, mining and query, and presentation of big data, i.e. manufacturing intelligence, um, and plant level data to corporate um, level intelligence? Um, Tom, would you like to take that one? Absolutely. Another great question. So there, there's a few pieces to this. The first is that the historian offering is the aggregation point. So this is where you're aggregating all your data, bringing it together, etc. In terms of your manufacturing intelligence, this is driven really a couple ways. The first is with your MES, with plan applications, uh, you are... Uh, essentially making sense of all of that data and leveraging it to uh, drive and control your plants. Now, in terms of, um, so you've got, you've got Historian, which has uh, a Historian uh, viewer on top of it to view the Historian data. You've got your MES to drive manufacturing intelligence on top of it. And then um, we've actually made several, in addition to all of the analytics that a company like GE builds internally. We've actually made a couple acquisitions in this space to do really predictive intelligence on top of all the historian data. Um, and so there's, 
I think several different answers to your question or segments to the answers to your question. Um, and this is the modularized piece uh, that, we, that Simon and I spoke of where you know, our goal is to provide software to you in modularized fashion that you can uh, consume easily and, uh, and fix your immediate pain points. So just a quick summary to my long-winded answer. You've got the historian to aggregate the data uh, and view that aggregation. You've got uh, our MES plan applications on top of it to make sense of it and determine things like downtime, nonconformant, OE, et cetera. And then you've got um, analytics to be able to do predictive intelligence on top of that. So uh, several different things depending on your pain point. Great question. And the next one, Don, I wonder if you can take this one as well. Um, can you describe your plans or roadmap for Historian? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so Historian for us is, as you can imagine, a uh, very vibrant product and one that we invest very heavily in. So there is, um, we divide the Historian for us in, in a couple different spaces. The first is, uh, kind of the, if you will, lower end historian that you, that you get uh, in terms of uh, with your SCADA offering, with our Prophecy SCADA software. Um, and so the roadmap there is much more around collection, et cetera. In terms of um, the roadmap for our enterprise historian, uh, this is really focused around speed and performance, allowing you to pull in and aggregate tremendous volumes of data, and then viewing it. So uh, being able to view and provide uh, some analytics on top of those tags, that, that's really the key for us in terms of the roadmap in the short term for the enterprise historian. And then there's the big data historian, which, uh, which Simon spoke of a bit in the session today. And for that, it's, it's really around driving the volumes of data that you get uh, and being able to aggregate things at, at tremendous volume. So uh, we break our historian offerings into a few different buckets, and that's just a high level of the, of the roadmap that you see there. Okay, we've had a couple of people asking um, in relation to your, your, your previous answer um, around um, where to find these demos. I think what we'll do is we'll, for everybody attending this, we'll send out a link so that um, you can directly connect and have a look at those demos. Do you want to add anything to that, Don? No, I think that's the right answer. Um, with regards to the demos, we can certainly provide a link to you. And then if you need uh, something in the immediate term, um, like I mentioned earlier, simply reach out to uh, your GE contact, whether that's the names that we listed in this presentation or someone you already know, and, and we can get you a link uh, uh, specifically faster. Uh, there's also a, a, a generic uh, question. Um, how, how does this integrate with SAP? So it is, I think, coexistence is critical with your MES. Everybody in today's day and age has an ERP system, whether that's SAP or Oracle or, or uh, yet a different version. And so um, the MES is your crown jewels, and you really need to have uh, software that is specifically focused on MES, in this case Prophecy. But it has to coexist with your ERP. You can't, um, I think without a coexistence model, you uh, become very siloed, and you've got the orders coming in your ERP, and you're not passing them into the MES, and so on and so forth. So absolutely the question is a good one. It's about coexistence. We have uh, canned integration points to ERP vendors like SAP and Oracle, uh, productized integrations that we do on many, many uh, implementations. And then we also offer uh, our open, open enterprise, uh, which is our integration framework, if you will, which allows you to um, build out integrations to, you know, if you have a homegrown ERP, for example, uh, or an ERP that maybe is, uh, is not um, industry standard. So um, the, the short answer is yes, absolutely integrates to ERPs such as SAP and Oracle, uh, and we have productized integrations to the top tier ERP vendors, and then we have a, an integration framework which allows you to integrate to um, other third-party ERPs as well. Okay, so um, we've got no further questions coming in unless anybody wants to enter anything into chat.
Uh, we do have a question which has just come in. Um, I was wondering if it's possible to store less data samples. For example, samples between set margins can be ignored or stored as normal state. This would dramatically decrease uh, data storage. Um, Don, have you got a comment on that? Yeah, yeah, and the answer is for sure. Absolutely you can. So you have the ability to um, essentially build rules around the data you want to store and the data you want to analyze, et cetera, and for the exact reason you just mentioned. So I think what we've seen a lot of customers do, you'll see some customers build out those rules initially, and so they're not, not collecting and storing uh, all the data that you might within the historian. And then we see other uh, customers build out those rules after the data has been collected. So they compile all that and aggregate all that data in the historian, and then um, they build out the rules on top of it so that they're only doing their analysis or they're only building out their business rules on top of uh, a specific set of data, uh, even though they've collected everything. So a few different options, um, and it really depends in terms of best practices on your business and your business goals. Uh, another question. Uh, could you uh, say more about value? Uh, these applications tend to help with uh, effort, loss, value, and avoidance, but not cost. So um, I think you know we do some pretty heavy ROI analysis, and we've done a lot of ROI analysis within GE as we've deployed uh, plan applications and the rest of the prophecy suite across uh, the GE plants. Um, and what we've seen, just as an example, is uh, over half of uh, over 500 million in uh, ROI driven from our implementations within GE um, in roughly a 12-month window, maybe slightly less, uh, just to give you a feel for the ROI numbers. So, so you are correct in terms of. Um, Certainly these applications tend to help with effort loss and, and value, ROI, those types of things for sure. There is actually some uh, impact on cost though as well. Some of that is labor cost, where you're doing things more uh, efficiently or with less labor as a result of this. And some of it is um, cost of materials and cost of used goods, things along those lines, where um, the amount of uh, goods used, the amount of uh, labor used, etc., is also uh, reduced because you're more intelligent in the use of uh, and how your plant runs. And so um, there is cost reduction for sure. We actually offer uh, for free, if you're interested, uh, some ROI calculations to help you show the value of, uh, of an MES implementation. So certainly something that, uh, that we can follow up on if, if, if needed. Okay, uh, another question. How does your historian perform compared to IP21 or PI? Maybe I can just um, take that and you can add some comments after, Don. Um, as a general statement, we've just released in this quarter version 4.5 of, of uh, Prophecy Historian, and we've benchmarked it as being between four times and five times faster than our nearest competitor. Um, uh, there are probably people that we can put you in contact with who can give you some more detail on that, uh, and we'll send out a link to that. Uh, is there anything you want to add to that, Don? I think that's exactly right. So we spend a lot of time um, comparing speed uh, and performance against um, competitors in the historian space, uh, whether that's at the SCADA historian or the enterprise historian or uh, big data historian levels. And actually, we do that really for GE within a third party. So we have a, a division called the GRC, which is essentially all um, Einstein's. It's all of our smartest scientists in GE who run these performance tests. And what we found is uh, very much appreciable uh, market improvements of performance of our software against competitors in the industry. Um, it is, I think when you talk about historian performance, obviously really matters. And so uh, that's why we use, you know, third, third party groups like uh, our GRC team to do that performance testing. A lot of it just is investment. Think about a company like GE uh, that leverages historian data across hundreds of plants uh, worldwide. And there is a ton of patents, there's a ton of investment, there's a ton of 
uh, resources put on things like performance of historian to uh, apply to this specific problem. And so uh, it's not surprising, given the amount of money that GE puts into performance of historians, that uh, we see the type of uh, uh, performance that we have of the pro prophecy historian and how, how, uh, how much better it is than, than some of the vendors that you mentioned. Okay, thanks for that, Don. Uh, the next one is how do you integrate data collection from the plant floor? And um, I guess it, uh, that's a question around uh, the complexity of that, both you know automated data collection and manual data collection. Um, do you want to speak to that, Don? Yeah, you know if you think about it, I, I think this is actually a strength of the prophecy suite. So we've got. SCADA software that, that uh, collects the data and then passes it over to the historian which you know aggregates that data and then the MES plan application software which makes sense of the data at a high level. Um, and one of the reasons why this is a strength is our software is modularized, meaning if you happen to choose uh, non-prophecy software for SCADA, that's fine. The historian and plan application still run on top of it, et cetera, et cetera. So each piece of those puzzle, uh, of that puzzle is modularized such that it doesn't have to be a GE prophecy stack. Certainly it runs better and faster, obviously, if it is, but uh, uh, it doesn't have to be. So that data collection specifically is something that we do on every implementation. It's something that we test out uh, within our uh, QA team internally and something that we deploy within our own factories and plants um, prior to releasing it to, uh, to our customer base. So um, it's mission critical. I think at this point it is really just uh, inherent nature of our software, kind of table stakes, if you will. Um, uh, to do, and it's something that we see on essentially every implementation. Hopefully that was helpful. Uh, next question then, uh, this is definitely one for you, Dom. Uh, what will it take to upgrade from um, uh, Plant Applications 5.3 to 6? Yeah, it's a very good question. So um, we've actually got several customers that have done this already. Um, and. and the answer, you know, not surprisingly depends. So it depends on how much you've customized your existing plan applications implementation. If it's heavily customized with uh, lots of uh, code that you wrote specific to your company, then it will take more effort than if you use the software out of the box. Um, the what I would recommend is uh, essentially an exercise where you do a delta. You look at the things that you've done that are non-standard, that are specific to your implementation, and you compare that to all the new functionality that we offer out of the box, and you see what of those customizations you no longer need. My guess is there'll be certainly a significant portion. Based on the customers we've seen that have upgraded so far, my, get, my guess is you'll see a significant portion of your uh, customizations, if you've done some, will not need to be upgraded, and so that'll reduce the complexity of your upgrade. So the answer is it depends. We've had some some very quick, you know, more like weeks, etc., and the upgrade done in a day uh, type upgrades, and we've seen some that uh, have taken a little bit longer. And it all just depends on how um, how customized your implementation is, and if you're talking about one plant versus you know a hundred plants. Um, we've got customers that are moving to Plan App 6.1 uh, over it's roughly 110 plants uh, that they're doing worldwide, and so obviously that type of an upgrade takes a little bit longer. Whereas we have other customers who have upgraded, uh, but it's at one plant locations, and, and so that's much more of a something they measured in days and weeks as opposed to, to months. So a little bit of a long-winded answer, but uh, hopefully it helped. Uh, next, question, next question is, uh, how can I use Prophecy Plant applications for condition monitoring, i.e. for predictive maintenance? This is um, a really standard functionality within plant applications. So it is um, something that, uh, that essentially you configure, meaning you use our existing tooling to do. Um, and it is, uh, I think, part of the benefit of using an MES. Uh, so for us, um, certainly uh, standard functionality, if you will. And if you're interested, we can do a deeper dive and walk you through how that would work. 
Yeah, and I think there's someone's um, posted a, a related question. Um, it, if that much data is collected, is the software able to predict possible faults and give alerts without a person analyzing the data? And the answer to that is yes. Um, so this is a case where there is within the prophecy stack, and it depend, it's going to depend on your you know where you're doing your analysis, but between uh, the analytics functionality of Prophecy and and, and that and our core MES functionality, basically you're building out rules around what you want to predict on, what you want to whether that's predictive maintenance, whether that's uh, you know what your rules are. You build out those rules, and in some scenarios that will allow you to do some manual intervention, and in other scenarios that that uh, provides some automation. Uh, around you know whatever it is you need to do, so um, the a answer absolutely is yes, and uh, the, it just depends on your business rules and how you want to configure them in the software. Okay, the next one is: Have you integrated with traditional data acquisition and control systems from various process control and instrumentation vendors? Yeah, the the answer here is is yes. You know, a part of the value of being in the manufacturing software space for, you know, depending on which part of prophecy you're talking about, 16 years, 20 years, etc., for, for being in this space for so long is you've done this. So for us, it's, uh, the answer is absolutely yes. It's, there's some canned integration points that we offer as well as uh, an integration framework that allows you to do this, you know, on a site-by-site -site basis. Um, but it is absolutely something that... Uh, uh, we offer a tremendous amount of out of the box and you know have done on hundreds of implementations um, the next one is what is the cost and as uh, a, a prophecy implementation engineer how can I justify the cost you know um, the cost is going to vary right we have customers who uh, have deployed our software across 120 sites worldwide, and we have other customers who have deployed it at, at one site or even in some cases on one line. So the cost is going to vary depending on the size and scope of the implementation. In terms of for you specifically, what I would recommend is um, we offer an ROI calculator, and so it it's becomes pretty straightforward. You plug in some of your numbers. We, uh, we spit out some cost, and, uh, and the ROI that you get on that cost and it's pretty straight, straightforward. Uh, absolutely happy to work with you to do that, um, and uh, and we can go from there. Okay. Well, the uh, the chat box is empty unless anybody else has got any questions. I think um, uh, I'd just like to thank everybody for attending. Um, uh, we will be posting this uh, to our website. And, and you will get a, a follow-up email um, so that you can download a PDF of this presentation. So um, I'd just like to thank everybody on the call, and thank you very much, Don. Thank you, guys. Really appreciate the time.